We are continuing to follow the breaking news out of Washington, where an appeals court has ruled that former President Donald Trump does not have presidential immunity in his criminal case stemming from January 6th. David Becker joins us now. He's a CBS News election law contributor and the founder for the Center for Election Innovation and Research. Jessica Levinson is also joining us for analysis. She's a CBS News legal contributor and a professor at Loyola Law School. Uh, all right, uh, uh, David, first to you. What legal precedent does this set, uh, given that the former president is also facing uh, similar uh, cases in other jurisdictions? Well, technically, it only applies to the D.C. Circuit itself. However, the D.C. Circuit is often thought of as kind of the second highest court in the land, right behind the United States Supreme Court. This, this is going to carry some weight in other courts, and it's certainly going to carry some weight before the Supreme Court, if that's anticipated. Donald Trump asks the court to take this case and review it. They are not obligated to do so. And I actually think this, this uh, opinion is very, very strong and comprehensive, and I think there is some likelihood that the Supreme Court will just let it stand without hearing. So, Jessica, um, you know, this is kind of like Donald Trump's legal style, right? Like, it, try to get it thrown out completely. Then I guess the next step is try to delay. So how does this change how Trump's legal team proceeds with his defense? Well, let's be honest that this is a resounding defeat. This is a per curiam opinion, meaning that these three judges appointed by different presidents with different ideological backgrounds all said with one voice, no, you went way too far in asking for absolute immunity. You asked about presidential value. This now means that we know this is a matter of first impression because we've never been here before. We know that if you try to indict a president based on criminal actions, that there is not absolute immunity. Now, the question about timing here. There's a question about whether or not Trump will decide to go to the entire D.C. Circuit and say, reconsider this. Will he try to go to the Supreme Court and say, reconsider this? Let's remember, we now have the district court judge and the D.C. Circuit both saying to Trump, absolutely no. Now, as David said, this is a tight opinion. And I think there's a chance that the Supreme Court might just say, you know what, not it. We agree with you. We're not even taking this up, which as to the question of delay means this could go to trial in spring, maybe late spring. Now, there could still obviously be delay tactics, but this is a big defeat for Trump. And it means that there's no broad reason based on immunity that this case cannot move forward. So, um, Jessica, the, as you know, the Justice Department has long held that a current president can't be prosecuted. But what the former president was suggesting was that uh, that former presidents, former President Donald Trump, cannot either be prosecuted, uh, at least for actions that are related uh, to their official duties, unless they're impeached uh, and convicted right. by Congress, right? But there's but, a process already in place. It's an impeachment process. Right. And so that's how you judge. Right. And then he, uh, he his lawyers argue that having been acquitted uh, by the Senate of inciting the January 6th uh, insurrection, Trump said that to try him in federal court would be a double jeopardy violation. Yeah. Uh, and what did the court say about that? The, the court said no. And frankly, I think that really fell apart when right after oral arguments, we had that conversation where Judge Pan said, if that's your argument, then one, you've given up the idea that there can never be criminal prosecution. And you've acknowledged that if there's impeachment and conviction, there can be criminal prosecution. So as Judge Pan said in oral arguments, that means that you're acknowledging the prosecution of a former president can occur. You're just saying there are threshold steps here. And then I think that question of do you first have to go through impeachment and conviction was really answered when, during oral arguments, Judge Pan said, what if you order the SEAL team to assassinate a political opponent, and then you resign the next day? So you can't be impeached, or you can't be convicted. Can it really be that there is no criminal justice process that can reach you? And essentially, we see the court, in its opinion, track that, which it simply can't be in our constitutional structure, that there is no response to that type of action. So, David, you, you know, if if Donald Trump's legal team does what they have a tendency to do with all of these cases, which is sort of push it down the road as far as possible, file for appeals, so, you know, buy more time, what happens if the appeals delay past November? 
and Donald Trump's elected. This is sort of uncharted territory, right? Yeah, it is definitely uncharted territory. Courts, the D.C. Circuit and the Supreme Court are acting very diligently here to try to move this forward because it's important for the voters of the United States to know information relevant to their choice in November. And the courts recognize this very strongly, even here in the D.C. Circuit. They put this on a very short timeline, about a week, for Donald Trump's lawyers to either petition to the Supreme Court to take the case or petition to have the D.C. Circuit, the entire D.C. Circuit, hear the case. But if, if that occurs, it's very possible the Supreme Court could still act quickly. They acted quickly in the disqualification case that is going to be heard in the Supreme Court later this week, and we'll likely learn the outcome of uh, perhaps by the end of this month. So given all of that, I think it's still very likely, as Jessica notes, that, there's, there, that we're, going to, we're going to be moving towards a spring or perhaps early summer trial here. If this goes all the way through to November, um, we'll have to see what happens. If Donald Trump gets elected, if he's been convicted yet, then if he has been convicted and he still wins and is ruled to be qualified to serve as president in the court case that's going to be heard later this week, then he will presumably take the oath of office unless something happens in Congress. And at that point, then we're going to open up a new can of worms about whether, for the first time, we'll consider whether a president can uh, can. Um, can pardon? absolve himself of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pardon himself of that of that uh, of that conviction. We'll see whether that happens or not. Um, I think there's still so many steps along the way. I think it's very likely this ruling, uh, which is very strong, is going to be upheld um, and probably not heard by the Supreme Court. And this case will go to trial uh, well in advance of the November election. All right, All right. Jessica, David, thank you so much.